Hey, want to learn how to format a song? Come on, I'll show you. If you're new to the concept of formatting a song, basically, uh, there's a couple things that I want to get out of the way first, like what a format is. Well, the format is just the order, right, of the basic building blocks of a song, the sections that make a song what it is. Every song has a format, parts of it that repeat, parts of it that come in only once, or parts of it that are the same as another part, but subtly different. <laughs> These things are the way that we organize the song in our mind as composers and arrangers. Common parts of a song format might be the intro and the outro, verse, pre-hook, the chorus, sometimes might be called the refrain, the uh, bridge or release or vamp. There's a lot of different little terms. The better you understand these words and their function, then the better you can operate as a producer in terms of staying organized and getting songs all the way from start to finish. If you're a musician, then formatting of a song is key to being able to remember songs. It's like really impossible to keep a large amount of songs in your mind without understanding the format. I've spoken to horn players that maybe learn the melody to a song, but don't know the format of it, and they get lost every time they try to take a solo. Is this the first A, the second A, the B, or the last A, or is this the bridge? Whatever. If you don't understand that basic order, then it is impossible to function as an improviser over those things, at least in a way that I think that people enjoy hearing. Let's take a look real quick at a really basic format of a song like Jingle Bells, right? It starts out with dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh over here all that stuff that's the verse right that's the part that you usually forget about <laughs> right when it's time to actually play this song for anybody then the part that everybody knows the hook or the chorus will be jingle bells jingle bells jingle all the way da -da 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 -da. that's the chorus so the format of that song would be the way that we organize the chorus and the verse. Is it A, B, A, B? Or A, B, A, B, B? Which is a very common kind of format for a song. First chorus, verse, chorus, chorus. And the names for this is not important because whether you call it an A section or a verse or hook or refrain or pre-hook or whatever you call the section, it's more important that you understand the way that it functions in your song. And this is a really important skill if you are a producer. Understanding the way that the song is formatted or can be formatted is going to allow you to take a simple idea, maybe just a sample or something, and extend that idea from just a loop to a song. I'm sure there are people who make a lot of money just making loops, but I think that most of the people who do this for a living are in the business of making songs and making albums. And so in order to do that, you have to be able to extrapolate from a small idea to a completed idea in a song. On the other side of it, Having a clear song format is going to help everybody involved with the recording process. I've been in the studio a ton of times where I've been working with a group of great musicians and because we weren't really sure about the format of the song, we've had to do multiple takes of a song that were really unnecessary. If we had a clear roadmap of the way that the song was going to go, then we wouldn't have to do it three, four times to get it right. The other place where formatting can really help you out is beyond the music in the other aspects of presenting that music to the world, like at a live show. There are some people who have MIDI lighting cues running off of the format of their song. They know that on the chorus, they want the bright lights to hit right on the downbeat of the chorus, or they know that they want to go to blue at the verse of a certain song. 
So knowing the format of your song will allow you to communicate not just musically, but you can communicate visually to people as well. This extends as well to music videos, right? So the same kind of thing, visual language that matches the form of your song. So you can have a music video that maybe is red in the beginning where things are down and then ends up turning into a turquoise or blue or something like that later on in the piece to show the arc of the song. There's a lot of ways that you can use these different formats to both visually and musically add interest to your music. So let's talk about some common formats. Most genres have formats that are specific to the genre or at least more common in certain genres. For example, blues is basically the root of the tree of most American music, whether it's rock and roll, jazz, uh, uh, funk, soul, country, it really came out of the blues. And one of the most common forms in the blues is a 12 bar blues. That is just one section, but it's broken down into three pieces. One, four, one, one would be the first kind of A section if you want to break it down to letters. Four, four, one, one, B would be the B section. And then five, four, one, one would be the C section. So a 12 bar blues format would just be A, B, C repeated over and over and over again. There are 16 bar blueses which operate in a slightly different way, but constructed along the same idea. In pop, a very common format would be intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, chorus, bridge, and then chorus repeats until the end of the song. Um, another kind of variation of that would be uh, intro, verse, pre-hook, which is just a little departure from the groove before we get to the hook, where that main groove returns, right? That process repeats again, verse, pre-hook, chorus, chorus, bridge, chorus out. What a pre-hook does is give you a break from the main groove of the song. Usually that's how it functions in pop music. A great example of that would be a song like Can't Stop the Feeling by Justin Timberlake. So you have the main groove, which don't, 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 boo-doo, boo don't, 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 don't. That whole thing is shared by both the verse and the chorus. What the writers of that song did, and very intelligently, was say, wait a minute, I think people might need a break from that. It's catchy, but they don't want to hear four minutes of it straight. So what they did was they put a pre-hook before the chorus. The chords change, the feel changes, that gives your ears a break from it, and then when the chorus comes back in, boom! It hits harder because we've gotten a break from it. Every genre of music has its own common song form. So what I recommend for anybody that is a producer or instrumentalist is to go check out all the music in the genre that you are working in. If you are a rock producer, you need to listen to a ton of rock songs to get the way that they're normally formatted. Everybody loves being an innovator, myself included, but what I ask you to do is innovate from a place of knowledge, not of ignorance. I say this a lot. It is difficult to be a true innovator if you have no understanding of the history. Popular song formats are popular for a reason, so don't reinvent the wheel unless you have to, or it's brilliant. Otherwise, just use the common song forms that exist to your advantage. Use them as foundations. You don't have to stick to a certain number of bars. You can change things on the edges, but not just start from scratch every time you start a song. The key here is staying organized. As far as using formatting in your DAW, it doesn't matter what DAW you use. I've been using Reason since 2003. Formatting is possible. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can label things by color, right? So maybe all the chorus is gonna be green and the pre-chorus is yellow and the verse is red. That might be one way to think about it. You can also, in certain DAWs, you can actually type labels onto individual tracks. That's another way that you can keep track of the format of the song. My favorite way to format a song is something that Reason has. It's not unique to Reason, but it's definitely something I would never want to use a doll without in terms of formatting, which is blocks. In Reason, you can just click up here, enable blocks, and what that will let you do is record all the same instrumentation 
and keep track of everything in little chunks of songs and then you can draw it out later in whatever order you feel like. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you're used to working in blocks, it improves your workflow so much and saves you so much time. It is just a godsend. Do you have a favorite song format or do you have ways that you like to format that I didn't mention? Please leave those down in the comments. I love to learn too. If you're still here, thanks for sticking around. Head over to my website if you want a mug like mine or a t-shirt. And also you can check out my music there as well. I promise as a married father of four that all the proceeds will go to good use. Also on my website, you can sign up for my email list where you can get access to all kinds of cool little plugins and stuff that I made for reason. So check it out. I'm Samuel Prather. I hope I gave you a reason to create.